Um, so I, um, I, I can't. I am, I'm a bit of a, uh, I suppose, an evangelist really now for TELUS Elevate. Uh, I've come to it a bit later, I think, perhaps, than uh, the two speakers have come first, so uh, Claire and Antoine. So uh, I'm a bit newer, but um, I am, um, uh, for me, it came as a set of tools which addressed a particular issue I had with the method of teaching I do. And uh, it's been very uh, kind of helpful. And that's really what I wanted to focus in on today was just kind of briefly go over the type of students I teach, the kind of challenges I face and how TELUS Elevators helped me to uh, address it really. Um, so the, the context of it is that um, the modules I teach on or the, the programs I teach on are primarily around security intelligence, uh, we look at development, um, conflict and international politics. And um, these are distance learning students. Um, there is a mix of full-time and part-time students among uh, amongst them. Um, that previously it was um, only full-time uh, part-time students, but we now have full-time students on the on the program as well. Um, it's also a very diverse set of students. Um, we have a large proportion of like, practitioners, um, so uh, students who work in the armed forces, diplomatic services, civil services. Um, but we do also have a, a number of students who are potentially changing uh, careers. Um, a few more students now coming directly from undergraduate. And we do also have a group of students who are um, asylum seekers who are um, participating as part of a sanctuary scholars uh, scheme. Um, what it does mean is we have a very diverse set of students across a big area. Um, so our, my students can literally be based uh, anywhere. So on Modules I've just been teaching, they will, some will be in uh, East Asia, some will be in the Americas, some in Africa, and a few students in Europe. Occasionally we get them um, in Leicester as well, um, but uh, yeah, it's a large range. Um, I'm going to jump to the bottom point, really, though, like, because the key issue here is that it needs to be asynchronous learning. So it's trying to find a way of teaching students effectively um, when they are not all in the same place at the same time. And these are kind of the three main challenges I've distilled it down to really um, are engagement, diversifying the learning activities and then fostering discussions among students um, that uh, I think engagement is a, a kind of key issue or an issue many people have across the, like campus teaching and distance learning. But um, it was trying to find a, uh, activities for students that weren't just discussion forums. Um, that previously the uh, the tendency had been for 10 weekly discussion um, uh, discussion topics with a couple of questions students would go away read come back to the forums and then post on uh, their responses to a few questions um, so I really was had been looking for a way to expand the range of activities students had um, and also to encourage discussion. Um, the main issue we had with students is that they would wait until the end of the week um, and that they would post an essay long response to uh, one or two, maybe three of the questions. Um, what it would mean is that no one was posting until potentially Sunday night. So it really limited the ability of other students to respond and, and to try and replicate a um, like a replicate a, a kind of tutorial feel in the discussion forums um, that the essays were so long I'm not entirely convinced many students were actually reading them and they would often shut down debates so instead of starting a conversation one student could be, potentially end a, uh, a debate or a conversation before anyone else had even had chance to put down some of their thoughts. Um, so I found Talus Elevate was the perfect tool. And this is why I'm an evangelist for it now, um, because I found it, it dealt with a lot of those problems for me. Um, so I had been a part of a trial at Leicester for Talus Elevate and I used it initially on the theories of international relations module, and then on a uh, post-Cold War order module. And the second module, uh, the post-Cold War order module was really where I was able to um, kind of implement it more fully and actually think about how it would fit across the 10 weeks. Um, I, a couple of the principles really that I developed as part of this were to make sure that this worked in, uh, in concert with the discussion forums. Um, that 
it was um, not there to sit um, as a an exercise that students would participate and then go into the discussion forums to kind of replicate what what they've just done. Um, it was actually an activity for students to, uh, to 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 kind of do independently or in isolation. Um, so what this meant was that I had a few kind of criteria which I set really when I went around picking different activities and different suitable material. I thought very much about like the length. Um, that these needed to be fairly um, uh, kind of pithy um, resources that I used that students could engage with and not be put off, but still be substantial, uh, substantial enough that they get something from it. They needed to be at the right level, like dealing with practitioners. If I gave the things that were too simple as postgraduate students, they would perhaps question why on earth they were doing it if it was too uh, too easy. And I really tried to uh, pick sources that encouraged critical engagement, um, like focusing on things which encourage kind of questions, maybe polemical resources rather than um, rather than just uh, kind of more open text which introduced the topic. Um, so a few of the resources I used um, are primarily focused on videos and then um, articles and reports. Um, so I found that the, um, the, the, uh, the videos were a very good way of adding in a different type of resource that I'd not been able to use before. And uh, I used particularly talking heads, so IR theorists or um, uh, academics introducing their um, uh, particular schools, particular theories or discussion to uh, dis discussing topics, um, engaging with journalism as well. And organizational videos help to um, develop some of the critical skills where I was able to encourage students to actually take the more academic ideas and apply them to uh, uh, apply them to um, kind of more journalistic writing um, or official videos. Um, so, sorry, going back a, a step, really, I guess one of the key principles behind these modules that I tried to encourage is the mix between theory and practice. So what it allowed me was to take the academic reading students were doing and actually give them activities where they could apply theories and test them and critically engage with events or um, uh, yeah, critically en en engage with the events or viewpoints. Um, when, in terms of articles or reports, I, think I use them conventionally in, in like, academic reading and taking items off reading lists. But I was also able to go um, onto websites, for example, the Council on Foreign Relations, I took a, um, uh, a long article about UN reform, which had about 10 different um, scholars all providing different viewpoints. And students were able to then pick and choose what they, which ones they engaged in. They were able to jump in and pick out particular critiques. And I found it very useful compared to a forum, where a forum a student would have to structure an article in a paragraph and um, this they could just jump to a particular person. Um, in, so in keeping this on time, I guess, and you said there's a Q&A to come as well. So uh, um, I have a few other points and also someone's doing some gardening. I might need to sort that out. Um, um, looking to the future, I think there's the potential to focus more on images um, that other modules I've taught on with critical security so, um, studies or open source intelligence. So I can definitely see the merits in what Talus Elevate can bring in terms of like critically engaging with like images and security images, and also with analyzing open sources of intelligence. So I might stop this now and try and deal with the sound issue, <laughs> but thank you very much. <laughs>